How you doing, fam bam? This is Chris Mizo here, and I have to share something very important that you need to do, especially if you just built your PC or you just purchased a PC, and that's to monitor your temperatures of your hardware components. So why is monitoring PC hardware so important when it comes to PCs? And the reason being is because either if you're a gamer or you're a graphic designer or you're some sort of content creator or anything that you use for heavy workloads for your PC will cause you to need to watch the temperatures for your components. Reason being is because the biggest weakness when it comes to components such as your CPU or your GPU or even your storage is heat. Heat can cause failure of your hardware prematurely and that's something you want to prevent. There is plenty of software out there that can help you to monitor your PC temperatures or your temps. For example, if you like to game and you open up your hardware task manager, you'll notice your GPU takes up a good amount of usage. It could take up to 70, 80% of your GPU. And when your GPU is working that hard, that explains why you hear the fans coming on because once it hits a certain temperature, just say about 70 degrees Celsius, you might hear the fans come on lightly. And the more hotter your GPU gets, the more harder your fans will work to try to cool off that GPU. And it is important to monitor the temperatures such as your GPU or your CPU or any other critical component that will that you will use heavily. If you do some pre preventative monitoring, monitoring, can't really say the word too good. If you just do some simple monitoring when you do perform certain tasks or heavy workloads, such as if you're a gamer or if you do some content creation or graphic designing, then you'll have an idea of what is creating the most heat. That's what comes into play. That is why it is so important to have something such as software to overlook your hardware's temperatures. One of my personal favorite ones I like to use is Hardware Info 64. It is something that is completely free. You don't have to pay for it. I recommend to use this software and I will show you the ins and outs of using Hardware Info 64. All right, fam bam. So if you want to download a good temperature sensor, a very trusted tool is HW Info. HW Info 64 is one of my favorite tools to use to monitor your temperatures. And you can download the installer right here. You can go to free download, make sure you click your local place. For example, I'm local US, HWI uh, 62726 is the latest version. You open the file and then click yes for administration rights and click next to set it up. As I already have it installed on this PC, I'll show you what it looks like when we open it up. So as we have hardware info, it should look something like this after it is installed. When it is installed, you'll see sensors only and summary only. You can go into your settings here and you can actually choose to have it for your system startup which is a really nice thing to do, or you can show sensors on startup. Um, you can select anything from here, and it is mainly all boot, uh, boot menu features when you start your PC. Now you have auto start, you do have automatic updates, and it does, has, uh, it does have flush buffers to start. Um, you can even do shared memory support on it. Uh, it does have weight disabled uh, GPUs, which is a little nice feature that it does offer. It has different colors and you can even back up your settings here. You can check for updates with this button and it does have safety protocols if you want to run uh, HW info. So it does give you a lot of good options here. So let's just go straight into sensors only because you want to mainly monitor your temperatures for your PC. So let's open this up. So if you open it up, one of the most critical components that you do have is looking at your CPU. For example, I have an AMD Ryzen Threadripper 3970X and its core temperatures are about 43.7 degrees Celsius currently. And you can adjust, you can, it's up to you like how you want to do it. Because if you like to monitor your CPU temperatures, uh, this is a good way to do it because you can simply just right click it and you can actually just put it right into the, you could add it to your tray here. So as I already have it added to my tray here, this is my 3970X uh, CPU's temperatures. So it's around 43 degrees Celsius now, so it's nice and cool. And you can actually select different colors here. You could right click it and click change colors and you can pick 
uh, one of your uh, choosing. So the next thing that you can monitor, which is also critical, is you can check out your motherboard here. You can choose to put it up onto your uh, icon tray if you wanted to. And you can see motherboard tray, temperature too. It measures different areas of the motherboard uh, to let you know if there's any sp specific hotspots, which is also good to know. And you can also check out your temperature sensor if you have a, a temperature and sensor installed on your PC. And you can even monitor your even your NVMe drive, which is also important. So if you have NVMe 4, you know that those drives can get pretty hot. So it, on average, this, uh, this NVMe Samsung's 980 Pro runs about 453 degrees Celsius. So for example, we could go to the Threadripper right now, 3970X, go under specs, and then you'll know how hot this max temperature can get for a Threadripper. As you can see, the max operating temperature for the Red Ripper is about 95 degrees Celsius, and that's to be on the safe side of things. So 95 degrees Celsius is Red Ripper running a little too hot. That's something to keep an eye out for. So if you know, if you, if you see your Red Ripper running about 70 degrees, uh, 75 degrees, and your PC is just idling, then you know that there's something wrong there. It could just be a thermal paste issue. It could just be that there's a cooler issue and that's something you can resolve before your processor can prematurely wear. Even though it says 95 degrees is perfectly safe operating temperatures, the less heat you can get on your PC, the better, because that means the longevity of your PC component, such as the Threadripper will last a lot longer. So it's good to check temperatures on each component you have because it will vary depending for example, Threadripper 3970X will be a lot different compared to a 5950X in operating temperature. Another good thing to look at is when you go down here is if you have a GPU. A GPU is also a great, very important to look at because for normal operating temperature, currently I have my fans on low. A 48.5 degrees Celsius is perfectly fine for this PC and usually it will not run hot unless you are operating your gpu or you're forcing your gpu to operate so as i mentioned earlier hardware info 64 is not the only software out there there is other software you can use such as cpu z there's a libre hardware monitor there is all kinds of temperature monitoring programs out there that you can use to watch over your pc and the reason why I shared Hardware Info 64 because it doesn't really take up too much space and it is one of my favorite ones to use because of all the extensive features that they do offer you. That's if you wanna use your RGBs or your ARGBs to monitor your PC's temperature. Your RGBs will respond accordingly with the temperatures of your PC and it can be on very specified parts of your choosing. I would suggest setting it on the main components you should watch for and that's your CPU, your GPU, and your storage or even your RAM. So here's another pro tip for everybody out there. If you notice any type of unusual usage, say you see your CPU usage up to 60 or 70%, but you know you're not doing any heavy task. Another big problem that can cause things like that is viruses and worms. And it may not just be the CPU. It could be a GPU. It could even be the RAM that's acting up. But sometimes it could be other things such as memory leak, which is more of a software issue. But you'll notice if it's something more of a virus or some sort of worm that is into your PC. For example, SV host was a big one where you notice a lot of SV host, or you'll see some sort of uh, Windows uh, executable where it takes up a lot of, say, CPU usage. And if that's the case, it's a good idea to take a look at the card right above me because that is something to take a look into. It is worth the investment. So just remember when you are either gaming or you're using some sort of program, when you are using it for your workflow, just remember that it will naturally rise in percentage usage and it will naturally rise in temperature. So don't freak out. That is a normal occurrence, but understand that there are limits as I explained throughout this video, because it all depends on the type of components that they are. For example, i9-12900K's temperature will vary differently from a AMD Ryzen 5950X. There is a certain temperature that they will tell you from the manufacturer 
not to surpass. Later, I will also make another video on how to cool your PC properly, how you want to have some proper airflow, because it is very important to keep your PC cool. If your PC stays cool, the longer it will last you, the less problems you will run into the future. So I hope you found this content very useful. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you know anybody else who is building PC, who are, who is interested in PCs, make sure you share this very video with them. And also, if you're not part of the big, wonderful Van Van, make sure you go down and hit the subscribe button for more. And don't forget to hit the notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here, as it is the same as my TikTok and IG as well. Fan Bam guys, do you have any questions at all or do you want to state anything that you want to share about PC temperatures? Let me know in the comments right down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo signing out.